This week we have another double Torah portion with the Parshas of Nitzavim and Vayelech, which are the 51st and 52nd Parshas of the Torah. And these Parshas take place on the very last day of Moses' life. And so the words he imparts to the Jewish people over the course of this day are really his final charge, his final words of wisdom to the Jewish people. And I think that this Parsha has so many beautiful ideas and it's no wonder that these are the concepts that Moses decided to share with the Jewish people on the last day of his life and his last opportunity to share with them. And the Parsha, Parsha Nitzavim, which is the first of these two double the double portion begins with something that I want to read to you directly because I will tie it back in later. It says, You are standing today, all of you, before Hashem your God. And then it lists who is standing before Hashem. The heads of your tribes, your elders, your officers, all the men of Israel, your small children, the women, the proselyte who is in the midst of your camp, from the hewer of the wood to the drawer of the water. Um, and it's in that all these people are here to seal a covenant with God. And I'm going to come back to this concept later, but I just want to implant that seed in your mind at the beginning. The Parsha continues with Moses sort of expressing that these, this generation, sort of, they left Egypt. They saw all of the miracles of God. They're going to arrive in the land of Israel. But eventually the people are going to turn away from God. They're going to forget about these miracles. They're going to turn away from God. They're going to sin. They're going to become rebellious. And they're going to see some of the punishments and the exile that we saw a couple weeks ago in the Parsha that was being sort of foreshadowed for the future. The Jewish people are going to go through this rough period. But, as the Parsha continues, there's always hope for return. It sort of says that then, after the Jewish people have gone through this suffering, they're going to remember God. They're going to turn back to Hashem. And essentially that Hashem's going to open them and welcome them in with, with His arms wide open, ready to embrace His children once again. He will forgive them. He will bring them close to Him. And the Jewish people will be sort of even closer than they were before. I think that's a very nice idea, especially with the holiday of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur coming up, when we sort of look at the past year and things that we did well and things that we didn't do so well, to have this reminder that no matter how far we go, there's always a return. So no matter what mistakes we've made, we can always get back and get closer to Hashem and to our relationship with God. And there's something at the end of this Parsha, which I also want to read to you directly from the Chumash, which says, it's talking about the um, Torah and the commandments, and it says, it's not hidden from you, and it's not distant. It's not in the heaven for you to say, who can ascend to the heaven for us and take it for us, so that we can listen to it and perform it. Nor is it across the sea for you to say, who can cross to the other side of the sea for us and take it for us so that we can listen to it and perform it. Rather, the matter is very near to you, in your mouth and your heart to perform it. And again, I'm going to want to come back to this concept in a minute, but essentially what it's saying is that the Torah is not far away, it's right there and accessible. I'm going to come back to that. So remember the beginning piece about who is in the audience and this piece about the Torah being accessible. And then the Parshas continue essentially with Moses writing up the entire Torah, this whole story that we've seen from creation until now, and he gives um, this book, the Torah, to the Levites to guard, to look after, to keep safe. And Moses, the Parsha ends with sort of Moses giving control or give, passing on his leadership to Joshua, who's going to be his successor, who's going to, from the next day, you know, when Moses dies, Joshua is going to become the leader of the Jewish people. And so he makes a very public point of appointing Joshua in order so that the people will know to respect him and to follow in his ways. So going back and tying in these different points that I sort of set up, what I think we really can gain from this Parsha and what it completely makes sense, again, that this is what Moses left the Jewish people with, is that the Torah is for everyone and it's accessible. So when we see all the Jew the different types of people that are listed at the beginning of this Parsha, again, we have the heads of tribes and we have the people who gather water for the Jewish people. So we have sort of the, the highest, um, the most 
sought after positions, the most respected positions, and the positions that people overlook the most. The Torah is for both of them. You have women and you have men, you have children and you have elderly people, and the Torah is for all of them. It's not just for the most elite. It's not just for, you know, the richest, the greatest, the, the most learned. It's accessible for everyone, the, the highest of the high people and the lowest of the low people. The Torah is um, sort of non-judgmental in that way. It's equally the highest of the high peoples as it is the lowest of the low people. And when it talks about um, the Torah not being in the heavens or across the sea and not needing somebody to go fetch it for you, it's because the Torah is right there at our fingertips ready to be learned and studied and appreciated. You know, nowadays, it's very different than it was when the Torah was written. We have the wonderful creation of the internet, and we can type in and research and learn anything we want about the Torah and see all of the different commentaries. We can have a book like this one, which gives us the entire Torah right here and commentary, and we can look at it and we can study it. And as I said, sort of in the very, very first Life's Children, in the very first Parsha video that I created, I'm not a rabbi or a scholar, definitely not. There are so many people who are more learned than I am, but if I can take a book and I can access the Torah and I can find wisdom and create these videos from it, then so can everybody else. The Torah is is meant for everyone. Yes, it's meant for rabbis and scholars, but it's also meant for your average person. It's really It really is for everybody, and it really is something that we all can gain wisdom from. This is nearing the end of my third time reading the entire Torah and the, the commentaries. And each and every year I gain something different because I'm a little bit of a different person or because something else stands out to me from the Torah. That's the wonder of the Torah. Every single time you look at it and you evaluate it, it means something different to you and you gain different knowledge and wisdom from it. And so it's so it's right there, it's accessible. And so I encourage all of you to to pick up the Torah, to, to look into it, to learn it, to ask questions, to, to seek out rabbis and friends and teachers who can help guide you into the beauty of the Torah. And I hope you all have a wonderful week and a Shabbat Shalom.